This is, this is, this is. Welcome to it. Brand new episode for you. 533. We're getting up there. We're over halfway to 1,000. Crazy, right? I know. I'm not really counting, but here we are. 533. It's a voicemail episode. A lot of good stuff for you. But first, mxpeaks.com. We have shows coming up. Chicago, back-to-back, Metro. It's Friday the 13th and 14th in December. MX Peaks and the Ataris. Go to mxpeaks.com. Get your tickets. We're also going to be coming to Texas at the new year, January 3rd, House of Blues, Houston, January 4th, House of Blues, Dallas. Big Texas weekend. Can't wait for it. MXPeaks.com. Get your tickets. I'll see you there. Uh, Chicago, we're going to be doing different sets each night because we're there for two nights. Houston, Dallas, we will do different sets. We usually do, but it won't be quite as different, right? Um, we're looking forward to it. You guys want us to play the new song, Set a Fire? If you haven't already heard the new song or seen the video, please go check out the new video for Set a Fire, our new song. MXPX is going a little, a little heavy. Um, we're really having a good time with this one, and we'd love for you to see the video. Go to MXPX YouTube, subscribe to our YouTube, because that also will get you notifications when we go live. Yes, live streams have been so much fun. Get your requests in. I don't know when the next one is. Probably probably this week um it's my birthday week yay what's up birthday week um a lot to celebrate maybe a lot to not celebrate i don't know what you're dealing with but i'm having a great week so far all right um let's get to some voicemails um voicemails right now all right bob mcknight he's been producing the you know the podcast shout out to you my friend he did not send these voicemails over. I actually downloaded these myself, all right? So um, just wanted to put that out there. Bob, maybe you could do a little bit more. I'm kidding, by the way. Bob does a whole lot. He puts the whole podcast together after I send him the pieces, and he does a great job. So if you want to be part of the podcast, not producing the podcast, but be on the podcast, just call in. The number is 360-830-6660. It's a voicemail, so leave me a voicemail. The limit is three minutes. Don't stress on the three minutes. If, if, if you get cut off, just call back and do it again. People do it all the time. So be part of the podcast. Give us a story, a topic. Be interesting. That's all I really, really want to stress is be as interesting as you possibly can. And to a certain extent. Some, some people call in and they're just jabbering on the phone the whole time, trying to be entertaining, and it's just it's a, it's a little much. But uh, hey, I'm not complaining. I love it. I love it all. I love hearing from you guys. I love putting you on the podcast. I love answering your questions. So keep up the good work. All right, let's get to it. Here's the first one. What's up, man, dude? This is top five guy, Anthony. I'm glad you like the idea of the top five. We're going to keep rolling. We're going to do it. Um, this week, we're going to have fun, dude. We're going to do top embarrassing moments. And nice. I'm going to start off with one and then you can share with it. Cause I think that's only fair. Okay. But I was in class, dude. We had a great time. Me and my teacher, we had, we're great friends. And, uh, I looked up to him, you know, so I was like, Hey, can I stick around for lunch, you know, in the school room? And he's like, yeah, for sure. He's like, well, what you, they got like subway or something like that. And, uh, we're sitting there eating, you know, talking and stuff like that. And I got my lunch full, dude, my Oreos, everything like that. My Capri Sun, dude, I'm set, dude. Like, I'm good. Like, I'm fucking in it, dude. I'm, I got my fucking best lunch ever. And I'm sitting there talking to him, eating. He's like, we got three minutes left. And he goes, just hurry up and, you know, finish your food. And, you know, we'll go back to uh, class. we got three minutes. So, like, all right, cool. So, I finished my food. And I had to walk past his desk with the teacher aide next to him. And I'm telling you, bro, I walked by their desk and I threw away my food. But when I was bending over, dude, throwing away my food... I I ripped like a 10-minute 
10 seconds, sorry, 10 seconds fart, dude. And I was <laughs> fucking Kool-Aid bread, dude. I couldn't even talk to him for a couple of fucking weeks. I was so fucking embarrassed, dude. So I just wanted to know a couple of your, you know, most embarrassing moments that have happened, you know, on tour or whatever it is. And it's just funny shit, dude. Like, you know, cool stories like that. But, yeah, if you can answer that question, dude, I appreciate it. People want to call and talk about their most embarrassing moments. That'd be dope. Yeah. But uh, Call in. Yeah, man. I think it'd be a cool topic to talk about. Hmm. And, uh, yeah, dude, like I always say, hope you have a good week. God bless. Word up. Yeah. Thanks, Anthony. Um, I think you just hung up. Um, so check it out. Embarrassing moments. Most embarrassing moments. Let me think. I don't know if I have a top five, but uh, I'll try. Super Bowl. Seahawks against the Patriots. The year was, I think it was 2014. 2013 or 2014. One of those two years. Uh, this is my top five. I don't know if this is... I don't know. I'm just can't. I'm trying to think of a few. Um, Seahawks, Patriots, Super Bowl. This is our second Super Bowl in two years, back to back. And we won the first one against the Denver Broncos. Amazing game. We killed them. We blew them out. Um, it, it was a while. It was wild because, you know, I wrote a song a long time ago called Gimme Christmas. And it's a joke Christmas song. Kind of has like a rap vibe to it. And uh, little dog got the diamonds on. And there's a line that's like, the Seahawks, my favorite team, the Seahawks win the Super Bowl. That was like what I wanted for Christmas. And I finally got it that year with Denver Broncos, against the Denver Broncos. And also, we played um, we played Denver not too long after that um, that game. And I came out in a Seahawks jersey for the encore, and I got up close to the crowd, and this girl just slapped the hell out of me. I was like, I deserve that. I deserve that. So that wasn't an embarrassing moment. But what was so embarrassing is having to face all my friends that weren't Seahawks fans when we lost that second Super Bowl against the Patriots. We had come back. We're about to pull ahead. Very end of the game. Uh, game's on the line. We drive down the field on offense. We're at the we're two yards from the end zone, and Russell Wilson decides to pa try to pass the ball uh, instead of handing off to Marshawn Lynch. And when he passes the ball, one well, I don't even remember the guy's name. I, I decided not to know the guy's name, but he catch he intercepts the pass, and the game's over. We lose. It was. It's probably one of the worst things that's ever happened to me in sports life. So, so, I, so although it wasn't super embarrassing, I can't really think of five. So I just thought I'd throw that in there. Um, another embarrassing moment was just last week we played. Who did we even play? Um, we got blown out, and it was just it was embarrassing. It was embarrassing. I don't even know. Um, it, it wasn't necessarily, oh, it was uh, the, the Buffalo Bills. It wasn't a game that we were supposed to win necessarily, but it was a game that any game you want to be competitive, you want to play well, be able to tackle, be able to throw, be able to catch, be able to run the ball. Seahawks couldn't do any of that. They couldn't do any of that. Nothing. So that was, that's another embarrassment. Um all right, another embarrass. Let me let me get to like real embarrassing things. Um, oh, here's something that happened over the summer. We were in Denver, and we played a show with No Effects, and No Effects actually never even went on stage because there there was a storm that was coming, and they postponed our set about 15 minutes. But they're like, "You're going to go on." And have a little, you know, do this, and then it's supposed to clear up, and, and no effects will go on. So we ended up, we go on, it's getting crazy windy. I go up, 
and the wind is just blowing all over the place. It starts raining. I'm playing. I go back, and I think it was on Not Today. I, I step back in between, you know, on that part in between the first chorus and the second verse. I'm, I'm about to go back and say, was there a time when life was ever easy? Maybe that was just a story they told to appease me, but lesson learning comes a little harder to me than it was. And if you need the proof, I'll point you to that time. I swear, I'll go. Oh, all right. So anyway, right before that, I walk back, and the wind. At the same moment, there's a gust of wind that pushes me back. So I I I walk back, but then I stumble because the wind is pushing me, and I actually stumble and fall onto the stage. Real quick, fall, get up keep playing and I'm just like what just happened like I, I just couldn't believe it because every now and again I will fall on stage I've done it before I've fallen off the stage head first down in between the barricade in San Diego one show I was caught by the security guards just before my brains bashed into the floor so I've fallen before but this was like you know there's 10,000 people watching us and they're not all necessarily MXPX fans. So some of those people probably wanted us to fail. So I'm just like, man, we got to do good. We got to really be on our game here. And and I fell down. But the rest of the, sh I mean, even with the fall, who cares? Like, it's kind of punk rock because the bass toss was awesome. The whole rest of the set was great. We we played great. We sang great. The, the crowd was awesome. Uh, unfortunately, you know, no effects never came out. And so there was a huge riot and we got some symbols stolen and all that, but that was embarrassing. Um, I would say another embarrass. So we're at what that was three We have uh, we have two, two and then one. So number two embarrassing moments for me goes way back. Um, probably 10 to 12 years ago, somewhere in there. Um, when Tumble Down was 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 playing a lot, so definitely pre that Super Bowl um, that I was talking about, 2013. So it's probably around 2010. Let's just say 2010, somewhere in there. Uh, I got when we bought the house that we bought that we live in now. Um, it came with a Cadillac, a 1963 convertible Cadillac, and it was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful classic car. At the time, I already had a truck. I had a I had a pickup truck. It was down there, so I like, was just kind of like, ah, well, I don't really need this car, so I was gonna sell it. Uh, and then I don't know why, but the idea came up, and, and I talked to a few people in town that were like, hey, let's do this thing. The idea came up that we we're gonna do a a raffle. We we're gonna raffle off this car at this classic car uh, festival type convention that Tumble Down was playing. We played this, this classic car conventional, con convention. sorry, um, And so leading up to it, we're going to start selling raffle tickets. Da, 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 da. Well, I had this, this guy. I had him in charge of everything. And so he just came to me with all the info, and I just put it out and started selling the tickets. And, well, <laughs> we're, like, about to give away this car we're going to give it away i mean i don't know i saw i don't know how many we ended up selling but uh i'm at the car festival convention wherever you call it the rumble and we get contacted right before it happens by the gambling commission the whatever i don't know the washington state lottery commission or something like that and they're like you can't do that this is illegal. You have to go through do, 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 all this stuff. So we had to do a bunch of paperwork that wasn't done. I guess I had assumed it was done, but that's me being an artist and not crossing my T's and dotting my I's. Um, taking word from the guy that was in charge of the, the, the business part. Wasn't anything to do with anybody from MXPX or Tumble Down or anything. It was like a guy that lived in town that worked at a bar. And um, anyway... Long story short, I had to go up when everybody's ready to get, you know, am I going to win this car? They got their tickets. I had to go up in front of all these people and announce that, hey, I'm sorry, 
we can't do the raffle. We're going to have to postpone the raffle for a couple weeks from now. We're going to do an event probably at the Manette Saloon, and we'll, we'll give away the car then. But the Washington State Commission won't allow it to happen here. It's not happening. It was very embarrassing. I had to swallow my pride. I had to tell everybody, I'm a moron. We didn't do it right. Trying to be cool and sell this car in a cool way to where somebody gets it for like nothing, you know. And it's, you know, it didn't work out. I had to, I had to bite the bullet on that. So, you know, what I did was I put out a bunch of posts and let people know we're going to, we're going to be, I let them know what happened. In fact, I think I have it here somewhere. Let me, um, let me look at, let me look. No, I don't have it. No, 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 no. Okay, here we go. Um, update. We're working with the Manette Saloon sidebar to do an event and finally give this car away. Stay tuned for the actual date coming in a week or more. Of course, since we had to postpone, we are offering your money back if you would like. Go into the Manette for that. Thank you so much for your patience, understanding, and support. This was a very local Bremerton thing. It wasn't really, it wasn't on, it was online, but it wasn't really like our fans that were buying tickets for this thing. It was just people in town that could go physically buy, because I wasn't selling tickets online. I wasn't selling tickets even from me. It was at the bar. You go to the bar, buy the tickets, come back, get the thing. Anyway, um, so that was it. And, uh, you know, I had to, you know, just let everybody know that, uh, oops, we didn't do it right. But it was a 1963 Cadillac that, um, you know, we ended up giving away. And it had 102,000 miles, 390, a 390 V8 engine, um, new plugs, wires, all that stuff came with it. It, it was cool. It was a cool car. And um, so here, here's... Here's what I, what I found. The Washington State Gaming Commission contacted us yesterday and said we need to do a little more paperwork to comply with their regulations. This will take some time, but we anticipate being able to draw the winning name in the next couple of weeks. That that was embarrassing. Just failing, you know, at trying to do something cool. Um, but it ended up being great. We did a raffle at the Manette Saloon. We did an event. There was a ton of people there. I'm sure, they, I'm sure a lot of people missed it too, but... But if you bought a ticket at that car convention, you still were eligible to win. It just turned into, instead of a raffle, it was a giveaway ticket. You can buy a giveaway ticket, eh, whatever, semantics. So that was embarrassing. Um, and now actually, I've got one more. So we're at number one, my number one most embarrassing moment and I don't know if this is of all time because I can't remember my childhood right now. I think I blocked out all the very embarrassing moments. But this was pretty embarrassing. This is the most embarrassing recently. I was right here in the studio. I was by myself. I was practicing. So here I am, I'm practicing. Practicing bass guitar. And I had my headphones in. The bass was on so you could hear it in the room. But I was... I wasn't singing in the mic or anything but because I just had my headphones from my phone. I was listening to the to music. And so I was turned away from the door, just rocking out, singing, doing it. And I'm just going for a while. And then I turn around and I stop. And Tom Wisniewski and his lady friend, his friend, are just laughing at me. Just start laughing. And I'm just like, I start laughing because I'm just like, what, what, what are you going to do? And I'm like, well, yeah, doing some Goldfinger practice. I, at least I'm practicing. At least I'm doing something. That's what I said to them. And and uh, Tom's like, yeah, you're good. You're good. I was just, you know, showing her around, letting her see, you know, what our practice space looks like. I'm like, sure you are. Sure you are. So just the, the, mere, the mere act of them laughing at me. And, and hey, it was funny. I don't, I don't, I'm not mad at them for laughing at me. I'm not hurt from Tom laughing at me. I think it was funny. Anybody would have laughed. It was funny. I'm sitting there just rocking out. I wasn't just like practicing. I was jumping around like, like a show. I, I was like really doing it. And so they started laughing. I'm like, oh no, I'm going to have to tell Pierre about this. Pierre from Simple Plan. because And he's like, why? Why tell Pierre? I'm like, well, Pierre does the same thing I do. He 
when he's rehearsing for a simple plan set, he'll actually play their set in his studio and sing and just be in their studio in the studio in his house in his rehearsal space, just singing along to their set. That's how he rehearses. I'm like, well, that's 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 how I rehearse as I'm trying to do the set. Um, you know, and it's you're not going as hard as you would go live in front of people, but I want to kind of feel it. I want to feel what it feels like to be standing and grooving and moving. And, and, um, and I just, yeah, I guess I was, uh, I was singing like no one was watching because I was just singing out. Ah. And no one was watching until Tom walked in. <laughs> Everybody, all the band members can get in here, you know, of course. So, uh, never assume you're alone. Uh, that's probably my most embarrassing moment. Uh, and I was thinking about it for a while after that happened, after they left, they're like, all right, we're going to go see, ya. I'm just like sitting there going, wow, that was, that was embarrassing. <laughs> and, and at the same time, I'm like, whatever, I don't care. It's all good. But, uh, if, if that happened to me when I was a kid, how much more embarrassing would it be? You know, you don't have the confidence when you're young, you know, I've, maybe you do, but I didn't have the confidence when I was young. Nowadays, I have confidence in a different way. It's definitely different than, than back then, but I'm still embarrassed, still embarrassed. All right, let's, let's go to uh, another one. Mike, Friday night, post-MXPX show in San Pedro. You guys freaking rock. You put on a hell of a show. Anthony up there with you with his little girl, awesome freaking kicking ass the sun behind you made everything just like so incredible the sound was freaking incredible bum that your set was cut short thought it was supposed to be 40 minutes got 26 out of it you know hey god i hope you guys get keep out there just rocking anyway joe from uh the orange county and uh fucking love you guys man keep rocking thanks man bye that pumps me up, Joe. Thank you. Thank you for the call. San Pedro was so good. We had a great time. Yes, short set. We were bummed because of all the other shows, including that Denver show I was just talking about. Those were like 45-minute sets. Yeah, something like that. So, um, But, you know, when it comes to 30-minute sets, it's really hard to get right on 30 because they're like, they don't want you going over. They're like, we got to keep this schedule. So we kind of probably rushed through it a little, not rushed through it, of course. We just played our songs, but I probably didn't talk and stretch out some things as much as I might do. Well, it's, I definitely didn't as much as I would do for a headlining set. But even as much as I might do for a 45-minute set, um, it really does make a difference. But man, that pumps me up, Joe. Thank you so much. So great to hear. Uh, can't wait to see you again. I hope, uh, hope we get back down south. Um, in 2025 for some more shows. All right, let's get to, and, and is it weird? We're, we're living post no effects. We're living in a world where no effects is no longer a band, just like the Ramones, just like so many bands, minor threat, uh, all different circumstances, of course. Um, I don't know, man, it's just wild. Um, here we are. We're still going. Thank you all so much for, for standing up for for being fans of MXPX, you know, because we really, really appreciate that. Appreciate that. All right, let's hear another one. Hey, Mike, it's Tyler. Um, I've been a fan for a while, unknowingly, actually. Uh, there's like a lot of songs like Chick Magnet. Um, the one, I, is, it, is the name going nowhere fast? I don't know. Long story short with that one is, um, I was riding my mountain bike one time, and I went on a trail, a mountain bike trail in Port Gamble that I shouldn't have any business going on, right? Mm -hmm. And I was listening to a playlist, and I crashed, right? And it was after a berm, and I was, like, trying to figure out what to do. But when I crashed, I got up, and my phone was blaring off music, and then the song that was playing while I crashed was going nowhere fast. And I was just mm. like, that's like, I can never forget that anymore. New York to nowhere. So, yep. yeah. Um, Dope. Wild, man. That's cool. So every time I'm on that trail, I just imagine to myself, am I going to go nowhere fast or am I going to go fast down this trail and not crash? <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, yeah, but um, I didn't knowingly know I was a fan until I ran into, um, I think, no, I know. No, I think, I know, um, your parents when I went to church at West Town Community Church. Oh, wow. Uh, right now. Crazy. I'm actually going to church with them in Paulsville. So, Whoa. Or another church in Paulsville that they decided to start going to. But, um, yeah, so I think that's pretty rad. Didn't realize that, but small world, really. So, like, my sister's boyfriend's dad went to Bremerton High School. I don't know the years, but probably ask him if he knows about you. I'm certain he does. He is about the, about the age. So, yeah. Again, small world. That's all I got to say. Small world, great music. Um, you do everything really awesomely. So, yeah. All right, bye. Thanks, Tyler. It sounds like you're local. That's rad, dude. Um, yeah, I wonder where you're from. Did you grow up around here? Because it's it's weird because some people know have known about us for years, and there's people here that have lived here, born here, raised here, went to high school here, and they still don't know about MXPX. It's like, how? How do you not know about our band? So it's wild. Um, that song that you're talking about, Nowhere Fast, pretty sure you're talking about New York to Nowhere off of Life in General. That's the album. And it starts, it goes, it starts out with just music. And then it goes, going nowhere fast, watching cars go past. I want the snow melt faster. This trip is a disaster. Uh, 15 or 16 hour drive, just played in some dive. New York to nowhere. We're never gonna get there. Um, yeah, I like that song. It's a, it's a a really fun one to play. Yuri has a great part in there. Very cool. Well, dude, that's a trip. Say hello to my parents. Hope you're well, Tyler. Uh, hello, Mike. Uh, this is Aaron. How are you doing? Uh, I don't know if you remember me, remember me, but I met you and MXPX at Furnace Fest. Uh, I'm the one who commented that I saw your band for the first time at House of Blues, Anaheim 2022 with Zebrahead, and you guys signed my phone case, which is, which is awesome. Uh, I wanted to share you a story, uh, an awesome story that happened to me uh, last Friday, August 23rd. Uh, I was running in my hometown, Sonosahunga, which is part of the San Fernando Valley, Los Angeles County, and I was listening to metal music, and I was running up to my old uh, high school named Verdugo Hills High School. And when I was running, I saw a teenager. He was wearing a shirt. And when I look at the shirt, I recognize the Pokenasha mascot. And I thought it was cool. And I yell at the kid. And I say, hey, like, MXPX is a good band. And he smiled and he thought it was cool. And I told him that I saw your band three times. And you guys are good. And I gave him a thumbs up. And then I continue learning <laughs> <laughs> nice. it's, it's really cool that that there are uh, a younger generation discovering mxpx uh punk rock which is really awesome that um they they have good taste in music and they hold on to those bands like uh, i as i remember when i was uh a teenager discovering punk rock 14 when i discovered superhead the first time like it opened my world of learning like different styles of music, and I still listen to them and to you guys to to this day. So, yeah, that's good for kids who are getting into punk music. So yeah, uh, that's all I want to say, Mike. Uh, I love the podcast. I uh, I enjoy listening listening to you talk about any subject and have good laughs. <laughs> so yeah uh, that's about it I hope you are having a good day or night or I don't know when you're going to listen to this voicemail so Tonight. I hope that you have a good time thanks Aaron man thanks for the call thanks for the story love to hear people uh, seeing MXP shirts out in the wild any kind of merch out in the wild um, I gotta say though the thing I noticed about your story was you were listening to metal 
when you were jogging, which there's nothing wrong with that normally, but just you should have embellished the story and said, I was listening to MXPX while I was jogging, and, and then I saw a guy with an MXPX t-shirt. Uh, next time you can call in and, and say that. <laughs> Don't worry, man. I am not mad. You're good. Uh, love metal as well. I went and saw Metallica over the summer. You heard that episode, right? It was great. Um, thank you for the call. I love seeing the younger generations get into punk rock, get into anything that's not mainstream music, especially MXPX, of course. Thank you. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you check out Set a Fire. We have a new song out. Share that with all your friends because it's a little bit metal. Maybe that's what you were listening to, Set a Fire. It's got some metal vibes to it. All right. Appreciate it, Aaron. See you next time. We'll see you down in, in Orange County. Uh, Zebrahead guys are headed to, I think, Brazil or something uh, right now. Pretty crazy. I hope they do well. All right, let's go one more. Thanks for, uh, thanks for being part of my birthday week podcast. All right, here we go. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Uh, Gene Everett here from uh, Westchester County, New York, New York City area. Uh, yeah, i got to be honest, with the, the NFL you were mentioning, call in, give some thoughts. Mm -hmm. I'm a New York Giants fan, but uh, Ooh, yeah, I, uh, I think we're probably going to have the worst or second worst record in the league. Uh, just not happy with uh, some decisions they've made. But hey, maybe we get the first round draft pick next year. You know, we'll see. But one yeah. thing, and again, this might be kind of sacrilegious to some, you know, I kind of hope the Jets do something just because i got a lot of buddies in town who are Jets fans and they haven't won since, uh, like, 1969 with Joe Namath. So I was kind of hoping, yeah, you know what, it's good for the city, even if it's not my team. Maybe Aaron Rodgers uh, can get the Jets to the Super Bowl, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, my prediction is Detroit Lions are going to be a very, very big surprise. And probably get to the NFC Championship game at least. Looking good so far. Um, that's kind of my wild card prediction. And um, they got us. Yeah, man. New York sports, man. It's uh, it's been rough, dude. This I, uh, never thought I'd say it, but man, I miss Eli Manning. <laughs> um, you know those two Super Bowls are magic. You know how it is as well with that Seattle win over uh, Denver. That's right. You got to enjoy them while they're here. But uh, cheers, Mike. And, uh, yeah, I guess that's my wild prediction. Detroit Lions are going to surprise a lot of people. Later. I've always been a Detroit Lions fan, even before they were good. I just always liked them because they kind of, their uniforms kind of look like Seattle Seahawks uniforms. I was kind of like, ah, that's good enough. I'm not a fan of them when they beat the Seattle Seahawks, of course, because that happened this season already. It was We almost had it, and we just, nah, just didn't, just didn't quite. It was a little too late, but... Um, I hear you. I actually, I wanted the Jets to do well too, man. I was like, man, it's been, the Jets are constantly terrible. It's like, let's throw Gary V a bone and, and get some wins for the Jets. But no, they're, they're doing terrible. I don't know what it is about that team. They cannot, like Aaron Rodgers is a great quarterback, yet can't play. You know, he, I don't know. It's weird. I mean... Like I said, embarrassing moments, the Seahawks. We all have issues, all of us. Even even if you're a fan of, of like, Kansas City, they're not perfect. They're going to lose some games. I mean, they haven't yet lost yet, but um, I love that you – sorry it took me so long to play your, your voicemail, Gene. Um, saw you on Twitter over there the other day. Um, but you, you got some solid predictions. Um, well – at least so far with the, the Lions. I don't know. I want to hear some more predictions. Now that we're here, we, we're, uh, we're at, while I'm recording this, uh, the week before this comes out, I don't know who's going to win the World Series because we're at 3-1. to one. Dodgers up 3-1 to one on the New York Yankees in the World Series. That's where I'm at with, with uh, my knowledge as I'm recording this. So congratulations to whoever wins. I'm personally hoping the Dodgers win because I'm a West Coast guy, but I got no real, I don't really care because the Mariners aren't in it. I'd want the Mariners to win, but they're not, yeah, they, they haven't been a contender really ever. A couple, couple times they get close and then it just, they just completely flail and, and ruin everything. But hey, 
Seattle sports. Am I right? <laughs> go Kraken. Let's go. Uh, I don't. I uh, I definitely am going to try to get to at least one Kraken game this season, if not two. Been looking at the schedule. Nothing's working out for me. I'm just too busy there, there, there. Can't can't make it happen. But uh, I love going to see those games. Um, I love cheering on Seattle sports and. You know, <laughs> Seahawks are rough right now. I don't know what's going to happen. All I can do is smile and, and move on and go do what I got to do. So I think that's how we get through our, our sports losses. Now, back to punk rock. I appreciate you guys. Go check out mxpx.com if you want to support what we do. We got new merch. We have hoodies, T-shirts, uh, vinyl, CDs, a bunch of really weird stuff too. Go check it out. We have um, we got a new video, Set a Fire. If you haven't already watched that, please watch it, like it, watch it all the way through, and then watch it again. We want to get those, those views up and uh, let people know about this, the new song. All right, that's it. Much love to you. Hope you're good. Um, shout out to Bob McKnight for producing. And uh, until next week. All right, happy November.